Out of all my years of doing photography, hanging out with other photographers, my own photography, there's this one setting that I always notice people forgetting that even exists. Recently, I've been playing around with it more and just trying to use it creatively because first, all I would do is make sure it would look good and I left it where it was at and I didn't touch it. And that setting is white balance. And a lot of people love to just put it on auto white balance and then leave it there, which is fine. White balance is the setting that pretty much just determines the, the overall look of your photo or video being colder or warmer. So if you have it set to warmer, then everything's gonna be a little bit more warm looking, so orange. Or if you have it set to colder, it's gonna be a little, everything's, everything's gonna be a little bit more blue. If it's perfectly in the middle, it'll be just white. So like, uh, oh, I kicked the camera. Like the wall back there is white. So if that was slightly blue or slightly orange, the white balance would be off from the middle, perfect middle, which hints why it's called white balance. So a lot of people love to just go into the settings and set it to auto because it's easier that way. And there's, you know, nothing wrong with that. It's just the auto white balance just isn't perfect all the time. So you can sometimes get a not as good look as you want. And then also you can't use it creatively because you can't change it. It's just auto. If you just want to leave it where it's at and have it look how it looks and you, you know, you can fix some of it in post. Um, and change the white balance in the, some sliders or something like that. There's only so much you can fix if it's like really bad, the, and the white balance slider won't be able to fix it if it's too far gone. So you wanna get it as close to what you want before you film, so that way it's less of a hassle after you film. And I said before, using it creatively, and you might be asking yourself, what do you mean creatively? What am I gonna, don't I just want it directly in the middle and have everything be perfect white? Well, for the most part, it just depends on, so it, whatever you're looking for is going to be determined on what you want, really. If you want a colder look, like if you're outside and it's cold outside and you want people to know that it's cold outside, a good way to do that is a little bit closer to the a colder side of the white balance and then it'll show it being colder basically because people associate blue with cold or nighttime, which leads me into the next thing you could do is make it seem more like nighttime. You could sim, you could basically simulate blue hour if you just bring the white balance back towards the colder side a little bit more. That way you, it'll still be bright enough for you to get your photo and then it'll be blue and get the it's almost nighttime feel, which is really nice because if you're taking photos at blue hour, a lot of times if you have a not very good camera that can do good at low light, you're not gonna be able to get the shot. But this way you can simulate it right like t right before blue hour and, or pretty much any other time of day I imagine and get blue hour blue hour looks and still you know get a good shot even if you don't have that good of a camera. And it's the same thing backwards if you want golden hour, you can make it a little bit more warm and then the, the sun the light from the sun will look more like it does at golden hour. Um, that one seems a little bit harder to do just because at golden hour the sun's like almost down so it's directly into your face. If it's not golden hour you're not going to have that light exactly like that but you can make it kind of look like that or you can bring in some uh, extra lights so if you get like you know how I have lights all over the place um, you can get some lights and just set it to more of a warm tone put it on your face and then you can simulate uh, golden hour that way. So using white balance creatively is not super hard. You just gotta you know, know what you want and know the settings to get what you want. Those are just a couple examples of white balance. Oh, another one. Um, if you want it to look really hot outside, like if you're in the desert or filming, you set the white balance to more warm, then you can make it look, it just makes it feel hotter there, which is why a lot of movies do that when you know they go to Mexico everything just looks orange. And some other ways of doing it creatively is if you you can easily get the orange and teal look if in color grading, if you just set your white balance to, towards the cold side and then get some orange lights in and then you, it'll, all, it'll just create the orange and teal look right off the bat. And then you don't have to do too much uh, messing around in post to color grade it to look orange and teal. If you're not the best at color grading, it's helpful to have most of the stuff done already before you jump into color grading. So it's a great way to set the tone of what you want to portray in pretty much any situation. 
Um, sometimes you just want a straight white balance and that's good, but sometimes you want different looks and you want to have your own creative personality poured into whatever it is you're making. And white balance is a very useful tool when you're trying to do that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna throw some pictures that I went, I went out on a, to take some pictures and I was using the white balance more for creative purposes instead of just keeping it at the middle area for keeping it at perfect white. I'll throw some of those pictures in and I hope you guys uh, like, the, like the video. And click on this one right here because it's a banger.